Hi, I'm Norman Parolo from uh, Parolo Design. I'm a furniture designer maker and a uh, woodworking educator at WoodSkills. Uh, this video is a follow-on to my previous video on the uh, on the miter jack and I made some uh, some changes since. This is the uh, one of two miter jacks. I have a stabilizer block here to work with it in different orientations. I described all this in my previous video and uh, how to set it up. So this is a plug-in uh, plug feature. And I've also uh, made some, uh, added some reinforcement to this particular miter jack. And this miter jack has had substantial changes since then. I've actually um, increased the size or the depth of the uh, keel. It's called a keel. It's a mounting block and it attaches to the uh, other face vise or the end vise. And this is the, uh, another plug-in stabilizer block. So that plugs in. And that, what that does is it sets it up for uh, for a horizontal orientation on a workbench surface so I can uh, plane better and work with chisels better. But the, the main change with the newer version of the keel is it's deeper and it grips the uh, either the face or end vise much better. And it also eliminates a little protrusion that I had that was interfering with my work. And you'll probably have seen that in my previous video. Now in this video I'll talk about uh, creating uh, tenons, uh, integral tenons, uh, using the miter jacks and I, uh, I will cr be creating both a, uh, a square tenon and a miter tenon. This is a miter tenon with an integral tenon of different sizes using uh, spacers. Here's some more versions of it. So this is, uh, it works very well with the miter jack to be able to create this because what it does is it creates the, uh, as I'll show in, in the videos coming up, it uh, creates a, uh, uni the surface or the, uh, the shoulders of the uh, tenon or uniform surrounding because you're actually setting it up in the uh, miter jack and you're working around it using this uh, other saw that I'll, I'll talk about uh, shortly. So that keeps the shoulders uniform right, right around without having to move the component, the wood component, once it's clamped into your uh, miter jack. So the miter jack is also known as, uh, it's a French origin dating from the 1700s and these particular miter jacks uh, date from the late 1800s, either of a UK or US origin. I'm not sure, they don't have many markings, but they work, they still work well and it's just a testament to how well they're made, they're 150 years old. So they're also known as uh, Boite à Recale, which is French for a uh, miter box and it works in conjunction with with a C à Recale. Now this is new in this, in this video. So I've designed and built this in the last few days and it's um, essentially, it's uh, Sia Recale works in conjunction with a miter jack. It's a miter jack saw and it's offset from the uh, work surface. In this case, 7 16 it could go as low as a quarter inch, but I prefer 7 16 I set it up for a, uh, I've got the blades uh, covered now for safety, but it works with a uh, Ryoba blade and I, I can pivot the blade across so I have uh, rib teeth on one side and cross cut teeth on the other. The, um, the rib teeth are graduated so they're a little more dense at the very, at the, uh, at the heel and then at the toe they, uh, it's a little more aggressive spacing. So that works well and I'll be demonstrating all this. I'll actually be creating these uh, miter tenons. Give you an example. This is what ultimately what the uh, what the joint will look like. So it's actually a miter corner with a through tenon in this case, or you can have it a, a blind uh, tenon. So that's that's exactly what we're we're uh, we will be creating. It's got a little off, different offset and it's a different width and thickness, but it's essentially the same thing. And this is a uh, this is a glued up version of the same. And the other tenon is a square tenon, similar to. Uh, a standard tenon that we're all familiar with. So I'm creating one of these with the, uh, <clears throat> the four shoulders, four cheeks on edge cheeks and face cheeks for the correct uh, nomenclature. <laughs> so the miter jacks create precise miters along edges or faces of boards, uh, well suited to case miters and squaring up tenon shoulders and cheeks, which I'll be demonstrating today. So you can have it in either a 45 degree orientation or a 90 degree orientation. So I'd be removing this plug-in module and clamping this to, a, to, a, to either an end vise or a face vise. So what I've done in, uh, with this newer version from the last video is I've, I've shortened this, uh, this keel 
actually protruded maybe uh, about an inch from the surface so I had a difficult time working in this area so I've shortened it and increased the depth to compensate and it actually works much better now so that's the, the large change and then I've, I've designed this this is the second iteration of this saw so I've set it up with some hex nuts for example if I need to use the rip side I just back these remove these two bolts and pivot it across and then reinsert the bolts so it, uh, it works really well. Um, this newer version is slightly narrower, has a different design, a different aesthetic, but it, uh, I can use it a little better. So it's really designed for the miter jacks. And the miter jack again is composed of a fixed jaw, a movable jaw, a, uh, a screw, either an Acme screw or a regular conventional screw, and uh, the keel to, to hold it to the uh, workbench surface. So I'll be using, I'll also be using this and the demonstrations coming up a Rioba, which has two uh, blades, either a rip or a crosscut blade. So I'll be using this to uh, create the tenants. Same saw I'll be using. Both these miter jacks, because you're working with, when you're using beveled edges, as in a previous video, you're uh, typically working with uh, low angle block planes or low angle miter plane, and I've shown that extensively in a previous video. So I don't have the planes here now. They're probably just behind me. And the work we're going to do uh, with the tenons, creating the tenons, the integral tenons, I'll be using a, a saw and mostly a very little plane work actually because they come out so cleanly. The spacing, this is it's not even touched with the plane. I just use a little chisel to clean up the corners in this case. So that's a testament to how precise and accurate this, uh, this instrument is. Double-sided or with two cheeks as opposed to four on the uh, on the miter tenon and this has four and these are the spacer boards i'm referring to so this uh, this would create an offset from the uh, from the workbench surface so i can offset the depth of the uh, but i'll be demonstrating all this and i'll be talking through the demonstrations to uh, clarify what i'm talking about so, uh, i don't have much else to say at this point but you'll enjoy the uh, videos i'm sure and you'll you'll be um, excited to find out about how how this miter jack saw actually works or uh, sierra calais how it works and how how it introduces precision into your your tenoning your creating of uh, tenons so stay tuned Wood skills, and I like to talk about a few woodworking books I've uh, written. My recent book is Quiet Woodworking in an Unquiet World. It talks about my movement to uh, hand tools from high tech to low tech, a woodworker's journey, which chronicles my journey from my former high tech career to my uh, current furniture making career. Along with that, I offer courses through woodskills.com. The courses range from a basic woodworking course right through the furniture design and a comprehensive design and making course. All books are available in both print and digital format. So I'm going to recreate this, this miter joint with an integral tenon to reinforce the, uh, the miter joint. It's a common uh, form of joinery that I've used in the past. So what I'll do first is uh, establish the, uh, the miter on both sides. I'm using a, uh, a Japanese square for this. So this is the, uh, the miter, the basic outline of the miter, similar to this miter on the same, facing the same edge. And I'll be recreating this joint. What I do first is I, uh, I delineate the outside cheeks or faces of the, uh, the in integral tenon and I do that using this uh, miter saw well it's actually called a Sia Recollet in French and it's a French origin and I've developed it <clears throat> so it basically uses a Ryoba blade that I can pivot to either use the uh, the rip teeth or the crosscut teeth it's offset almost close to half inch from the uh, from the base that keeps the blade from the surface of your uh, workbench. So it seems to work really well. And I've actually tuned it up recently. I've uh, had this a little fat and I've, I've reduced the width of it. It was a little more comfortable. 
and I changed some other specs on it. So this is a more up-to-date version of the uh, very first version of it. So it works really well. And uh, so I tend to use both the, uh, the rib teeth and the uh, crosscut teeth. And I've just, I've left enough uh, rib teeth proud of the, uh, of the edge so I can actually start a cut using the uh, rib teeth. I'll just put this down. So back to this uh, mitre joint with the uh, tenon. The actual uh, thickness of this, uh, this wood is uh, about an, close to an inch. And I use this, I have a series of offsets because this works, uh, because it's a half inch space from, uh, from the surface, you can offset it to, uh, to have different uh, widths of tenons. And so I have a, a series of three that I've developed, three different offsets. And I'm going to be using this one for this particular joint, which is uh, 3 16 of an inch. So I'll just lay this down. I'll place this over here. Now because I'm left-handed, I'm working on this side for this, partic this particular uh, joint. But if you're right-handed, you can just reverse everything. So I use hold fast to hold everything down. And I'm going to be doing something different. I'm going to be using the, uh, the crosscut teeth to establish the kerf for the, uh, for the outside cheeks of the tenon. And that's only because it's, uh, it just works so much smoother with this particular wood that I've uh, experienced from the, uh, the original. So it doesn't really matter. So I have the, uh, <coughs> the incorrect spacer there. I had three and I picked the wrong one, so I reset it with the correct spacer now. So it's offset identically to the other, the already established tenon. Now I'll just uh, pick on the uh, hold fasts and establish the, uh, the beginning of the uh, tenon. You can see the outline for the uh, one cheek of the, uh, of the tenon. Do the other now. I try to keep the uh, the base of my saw flush, uh, flush with the uh, workbench surface. I'm not going to complete the cut using that because it def again it's a cross cut blade and what I'll do is I'll take it over to another vise and uh, I'll cut it with a Ryoba saw on the, on the, on the rip side. So I've begun the uh, the cuts for the uh, for the tenon, so I can use the uh, Ryoba because they're delineated correctly and straight in both planes. We're going to get a straight cut here, so I'll, I'll bring it over to the other workbench. So I've decided to use the uh, the end vise on this same workbench. This is the uh, Ryoba I'll be using. Rip teeth on one side and crosscut teeth on the other. So uh, I need to go down to this line and this edge. So I've got a substantial curve already established so that helps. Delineated within the miter now, so it's just a matter of cross cutting the this part off the waste part. So I'll be doing that next using the miter jack 
to ensure that both uh, shoulders are identical at the same level and that's where the miter jack excels. I'll move everything over there now. So I have the uh, miter jack set up at this uh, face place with that uh, stabilizer block and the mounting block that the newer version of the mounting block is a little deeper so it holds everything better along with the spacer block. What, what I do now is I, uh, I need to offset this from the, uh, from the base of the 45 degree face of the blocks to uh, offset it sufficiently to clear the, uh, the reference or the base of the, uh, the miter saw. So I bring the saw along here and I set it along the line that I've established earlier on to create the, uh, the miter and then I just tighten it. And this should uh... Well that's one sheet done. And without touching anything. Oh, well, because the, uh, the direction of the blade is, and I'm pulling towards me and I'm left-handed, so I need to orient everything so I can work with it better. But if you're right-handed, it just means having the blade opposite and flipping the blade around. So then I, uh, I do this and I've got that cheek established now. Uh, what I could do next is, uh, without removing it from the, uh, the miter jack, what I've done is I've, uh, it's a two-sided uh, tenon now <clears throat> with two shoulders. What I could do is convert it to a four, four-sided tenon when I need to not remove it from the, uh, the miter jack to be able to do that so, I can, so the reference surfaces or the shoulders are all on the same plane. So I'll start with that and I'll just, uh, without, without even marking anything, I'll just, just do that and then I'll do this side. established two more uh, cheeks. I can remove it from, from this now. You can see the, uh, the cuts. So what I'll do next, I'll rip these, uh, these sections off. So I'm going to be using the miter saw again to create that reference surface. I use the reference surface, the workbench surface, and I've offset the, uh, the actual uh, component. We're using the same spacer I used for the, uh, for the other cheeks or shoulders so I have a four square four square tenon integral tenon with exactly the same spacing all around I'll begin the cut with a uh, using the cross cut side again and then finish it with the Ryoba Flip this over. Now, one thing I forgot to mention is these uh, Ryobas uh, on the uh, on the rib side. The the teeth are graduated, so they're uh, they're more aggressive at the front and uh, less aggressive at the back. So you can usually start your cuts at the back and work towards the front. I'll take it back to the, uh, the vise and I'll complete the cuts. Finish these cuts. The cuts are uh, very straight. The curves are very straight because I've already prepared them using the, uh, 
miter snow. I use a cross cut side for this particular cut, it's on a diagonal and it works it's smoother and it works better. So, so that is a little different from this one. I probably used a different spacer, but you get the idea. This is a, uh, a reinforced miter with, a, with an integral tenon. I probably used what I did is I used a different I used a different spacer on on this one on this bottom part. So what I'll do is I'll uh, I normally don't have to clean them up, but I'll clean them up using a chisel. So well, that's the actual, uh, let's call it a, a tenon a miter or miter tenon. So a, a miter joint with an integral tenon. Actually, I like the size of this tenon. I think it suits it. Now we could go one step further like I've done here and I've actually shortened the tenon. I'll do that. Different ways of doing accomplishing that is uh, I can use the uh, 90 degree face on the uh, on the miter jack so it creates a uniform uh, end all around, or just take my chances and uh, and do it on the uh, do it in a vise. I did some research and I found out why this uh, particular the second tenon I created is narrower than the original tenon. And that's because I had used uh, two different spacers on this tenon to offset it a little differently to have a wider tenon. And I didn't do that in, uh, in this case. I used the same spacer unknowingly. So that, uh, that's, there's no problem with it. It's just a narrower tenon, but that explains uh, how critical the spacers are and to remember to use, you're creating a series of these components to, create, to use the same spacers uh, for, each, for each shoulder, each cheek of the, uh, the tenon. And uh, so I checked them and uh, Everything's uh, 45 degrees on both cheeks, on both tenons. And the, uh, the advantage of a miter jack is that all the shoulders are on the same plane. That differentiates it from any other means of creating this joint. So everything's on the same plane and you don't really have to fiddle with the, uh, with the joint afterwards to, create, to, to perform that adjustment or to tune that. It's already done and the integral tenon. So if I need to shorten this, uh, I had shortened this tenon earlier using uh, a 90 degree face on the miter jack. And if I want to do that similarly, I can just use the 90 degree face, raise it, and then, uh, and then just uh, cut, cut across and it, this creates a, uh, an even end on the tenon. I'll, I'll, I'll do that now actually. I'm going to be trimming this tenon so it doesn't interfere with the, uh, the outside edge of the miter just like I've done here and it's an arbitrary mark I've made just to dem for demonstration. So I'll uh, I've set up my second uh, miter jack with its 90 degree face. Now I'll do it this way. So what I do is I, uh, I just do a preliminary installation and then I set it up. Such 
just work with the pencil mark on this case because it does create an even end so that's probably sufficient right there and I'll just tighten that up make sure that's tight and just cut across So I trimmed that tenon down to below the uh, the outside edge of the miter, so it fits a little better and it still has enough shoulder contact or uh, cheek contact to uh, to reinforce the miter, similar to this one. So so that's how that's done. So I, I use uh, I use a miter jack for quite a few of these the operations or the the sequence. I'm not sure if I've showed shown the uh, the rip side where I use the rip side but I use I tend to use a cross cut side more and I'll give an example of uh, how to change the uh, the blade <clears throat> so these are hex head bolts that are uh, attached to the uh, the main body with uh, brass inserts and what I'll do is I'll actually show you the uh, It's just some extra hardware I had lying around. Didn't actually purchase anything for this project. You'd probably get away with just having one of these bolts in, but I decided to use two to reinforce the, uh, the blade itself. So this would uh, just raise it lightly, and then I would offset it. So the, uh, the rib side is exposed and then I'll just reinforce it. And I could show you the uh, the inserts. They're a little deeper than I normally would install them. And that's only because I uh, oh, some issues I had. But this insert is. Uh, I'll just remove this. So you don't really need to remove these uh, this bolt, the pivoting bolt, ever. After uh, replacing the blade or uh, flipping the blade around, I've, I've actually oriented because I'm left-handed. But if you, everything's symmetric on this blade, so the holes are symmetric. So it's just a matter of flipping it around for a better orientation if you're right-handed. I don't want to do that and then forget which side to pick. But this is a this is a normal way to install a brass insert. I've had to go deeper here because of the. Uh, this uh, shank on the uh, on the bolts and it was a little bit of a problem. The shank was uh, oh sorry these bolts their shank was a little deeper than the, than this outside one and that's all the hardware I had so so I set this up for uh, like I said you don't normally have to go this far with uh, It's now configured for the uh, for the rib side. The rib teeth are more exposed. Uh, again, the teeth are graduated on the uh, on the Ryoba blade itself, and there's there's a little more exposure at the top, so you can start to cut down here, and it's tighter. And you still have some crosscut teeth exposed here if you need to start a cut using crosscut teeth, so that works. I love, I'm really happy with this uh, saw and it's done wonders. I mean, you, you really need this saw to work in conjunction with this uh, miter jack for it to be maximum effectiveness or take complete advantage of the, uh, the features of the uh, miter jack. And uh, so this is probably the more sophisticated joint I've created so far. What I'll do next is create a, uh, a four-shouldered uh, square tenon, not a miter tenon. I'm going to be uh, creating a uh, four-sided uh, tenon, integral tenon, into this uh, piece of black ligna. Uh, similar to this, but probably different measurements. It depends on the spacer I used in this earlier one, but I'm not sure I'll use this spacer now. And what I'll do is I'll uh, 
I'll mark around. So I mark around. So this is the depth of the uh, tenon. Clamp it down using the holdfasts. So I try to try to make everything uniform when I uh, when I create tenons without make creating too many uh, measurements. And that, that seems to work for me, just to simplify things. So what I do is uh, I'm going to be rotating this as I as I create the uh, the curves for the uh, the uh, cheeks of the tenon, the four sided tenon. I'll just. Uh So I did go ahead and uh, create the, uh, the four curves surrounding the, the integral tenon. It's a little di sized differently from this tenon because I used a different spacer, but I ran out of uh, space on my, uh, my video. Remove this and recreate all this. So I've marked off the, uh, the baseline for the shoulders. And it doesn't really have to be perfect as long as it's within the ballpark because uh, the uh, miter jack actually confirms that all the, uh, the levels, uh, the, uh, the baseline surrounding the tenon is at the same level. So that's uh, one of the advantages of a miter jack. So I'll set this up now again. It's a little shorter now. <laughs> Complete the cuts with uh, again with the Ryoba saw as I mentioned. So that's one side. Just release this. I could complete these uh, with this uh, same Ryoba. It almost has a depth, but <coughs> Ryoba blade, I should say, within a, uh, a miter, miter saw, but I'll do it the other way. Here's a part of the, uh, the earlier part that I trimmed off. <laughs> so, two more to go. If you're, uh, if you're only creating a tenon with two shoulders, or two cheeks, I should say, you would stop here, which is another very common form of tenon, but because I'm going with four shoulders, uh, four cheeks, four shoulders, then I can continue. that the, uh, the curves are straight. Now, so I've established the, uh, the outline for the tenon, the integral tenon, just similar to this, the earlier one that I've lobbed off. Next, we'll deepen the curves to delineate 
the components uh, that I need to remove to expose the tenon. We'll cross cut the shoulders next. So I'll be using my uh, Rayopa with the, uh, the ripped teeth to uh, extend these curves down to the, uh, the shoulders of the tenon. That's how important that baseline is because that's where I need to stop. So. So I have my tenon delineated now completely. I just need to cross cut the, uh, the cheek portion and then all these parts will fall off and I've got a, a, an integral tenon and I'll do that next. So I've set up a, uh, my, my other miter jack. I could use the same miter jack but because just for expediency I have two and I set them up on different vices and I'm going to be uh, cross-cutting at the, the uh, shoulders of the uh, tenon. So uh, again the advantage of the miter check is, is that everything becomes uniform. So I just rotate the saw around the piece as opposed to rotating the piece. So I've set the uh, the miter saw up for a cross-cut configuration. I flip the blade over so you don't saw into the actual tenon itself. And I just need to clean it up using a chisel. Using the actual tenon as a reference for the back of the chisel. And I have a tenon. And that's uh, essentially how it's done. It's a little smaller than this tenon. Again, it's all dependent on the spacer. I just did this for, uh, for demonstration purposes, but it's, uh, it's actually a sufficient size tenon for this size of uh, component. So that's a square tenon at uh, 90 degrees. These are all the parts. So the advantage of this, again, is the, uh, the fact that the, uh, the surface of the, uh, the shoulders are uniform across, as you've seen. So that that's that. And these are some more earlier uh, tenons that I created. Mitered uh, tenon with two cheeks. 
and this is a square, square setup with four, four cheeks. And I need some more. I'll just get a square to confirm that everything's square. adjustable square and everything's uniform right across and a check to check further I could do this so I'm using the uh, hand knife I can always trim the tendon down of course but it's always better to have a longer one to start with and then work your way down so that uh, that's it. So I hope you enjoyed the, uh, the videos and you're more enlightened to how a miter jack or uh, also known as a miter shoot is used and its uh, features and advantages. So it takes some time to become familiarized with a miter jack and its nuances I found but the skills and techniques uh, will become second nature after a while. So I've been using these for a number of days now and trying to understand how to use them better and uh, I'm becoming considerably more comfortable with uh, using them now. And after all it's a fine instrument and it needs to be treated as such. So subscribe to my, uh, my channel for more videos on the miter jack and other woodworking techniques that I developed and visit woodskills.com for my courses, my online woodworking courses, my books, I have a series of books available, and uh, plans. And uh, I also have a feature, a blog that I update periodically on, uh, on what I've got going on. Thank you for watching and uh, I hope you've enjoyed this.